insha'Allah, we'll talk about a hadith that has been posted by Nu'man bin Bashir, رضي الله تعالى عنهما. May Allah be pleased for both of them, he and his father as well. And this hadith are narrated by Bukhari and Muslim, both, and mentioned in the Arba'in al Nawawiya, in the 40 hadith that Imam al Nawawi gathered in his book. So before we start with the hadith, we start with the reporter, Al Nu'man bin Bashir, رضي الله تعالى عنهما. He is from Al Ansar, and they say he is the first baby born in Al Medina after the Hijrah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And there is actually another opinion which saying that Abdullah bin Zubayr, he is the first one who was born in Al Medina. So the scholars try to put all opinions together, and they said the first baby born from Muhajirin is Abdullah bin Zubayr, and the first one from the Ansar, Al Nu'man bin Bashir, رضي الله تعالى عنه. And Nu'man bin Bashir, his mother is the sister of Abdullah bin Rawaha, Amra bin Rawaha, رضي الله تعالى عنه. He was born in the second year after the Hijrah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he was from the young Sahaba. He saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He narrated many hadiths from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. But he was young when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم passed away. His father passed away in uh, actually he killed as a shaheed in the battle of Ain Tam. And he is actually uh Nu'man ibn Bashir. He passed away on the sixty fifth of Hijrah. By the way, anyone knows the battle of Ain Tam? No? Maybe I know it because it's in Iraq, so I, I know this battle. It's very famous. They said it's the fastest battle ever in the history. Nothing like finished start and finished fast than this battle ever. And it was with uh, the leader of the Muslimin was Khalid bin Walid. Just a quick, it's, a, it's very good to know this. This battle is very, like, how to plan well in, in war. So Khalid bin Walid, he went to Al-Iraq. And the Persian Empire was ruling at that time. And when he went to Amba, you know the Amba in Iraq? is the biggest uh, province in Iraq. But actually, Ain Tam, it's before, it's on the border of Amba. It's in Karbala, not in Amba. So he used to defeat all the armies or the Persian Empire south, and he goes north. And north, they used to live the Arab, but Christian Arab, with the leadership of the Persian Empire. And the Persian Empire is there, and the Arab was there as well. So the leader of the Arab told the leader of the Persian Empire, don't fight. You don't know how to fight the Arab. We as Arab, we will fight better than you. He was so arrogant guy, the leader of the Arab, so arrogant. So the, le the leader of the Persian Empire he thought, okay, we are scared of these people. Maybe it's better to leave someone else fighting. So the people around him, they said, you shouldn't leave the Arab fighting alone. You should fight with them. He said, believe me, if they killed Khalid bin Walid, because they, they really scared of the name of Khalid bin Walid. If they killed Khalid bin Walid, we get saved. If they don't, they will get killed. And the army of Khalid bin Walid will get exhausted 
So we will finish them, which is a good plan for them. But Khalid bin Walid, he never saw the leader of the Arab at that time, the other, the Mushrikeen, or actually they are Christian. So when he went, he saw this guy so arrogant. And he knows this guy is the key to have a victory. So what he did, he, he set a plan. He asked one, the wing of the, the army, to attack. And he take some of the special forces. And he made a plan. So the wing went just to start. He take his special forces, go right away to the middle, to the heart of this army. And they were so surprised, like few people, they jumped into the, the, like the heart of the army. And they just captured the leader. And they took him. And then the whole army fled right away, before even the, the battle starts. And they all flee. And when the leader of the Persian Empire saw that the army just like flee, he flee himself as well. <laughs> and they occupy the whole city without any fighting. And subhanAllah, they said this is the fastest war ever in history. That's why we, we, we know about this, because it's very famous. And it's, it happens like 12th and Hijrah. We had 12th of the Hijrah. <coughs> Like 12th Hijri this year. So uh, Khalid bin Walid, he was like really has a good judgment when he see, like he, he never applied for this, but when he see the army, he knows like it's one guy. We need this guy, that's it, it will finish. So he just went with some people, brought the leader, that's it. And subhanAllah, the leader of the Persian Empire, he was. In the, in the castle, and it's all surrounded with the walls. And when he saw in front of him what happened, he said like, I have to run away. And he was one of the famous leaders. So SubhanAllah. So the, the father of Umar bin Bashir, he was killed in this, in this battle. SubhanAllah. His, uh, his son, the one who narrated this hadith, he was also from the Umara, from the leaders, from the leaders. He was the leader of Al-Kufa and then the leader of Hems as well. The leader of Kufa and leader of Hems. And he was very uh, generous guy. He's, he, he known as a generous. And even there is some, some shara about him, how he spent money. Like gives people. So he narrated this hadith. He saw, he said, I hear from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said, Inna al-halal bayin wa inna al-haram bayin wa baynahuma umurun mushtabihat la ya'lamuhunna kathirun min al-nas. He said, I hear the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is halal things which is clear, legal things, lawful things, clear, and there is illegal, which is haram, also clear, but there is doubtful, there is suspicious things, suspicious matters between them. Not most of people aware of these things. Most of people, they don't know these things. So he said, he continued, he said, فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ فَقَدْ اسْتَبْرَأَ لِدِينِهِ وَعِرْضِهِ Whoever avoids the suspicious matter, the doubtful things, he saved himself regard to his religion and his honor. And whoever falls in doubtful, in suspicious things, he falls in haram. He falls in illegal things. He said, كَالْرَاعِ يَرْعَى حَوْلَ الْحِمَى يُوشِكُ أَنْ يَرْتَعَى فِيهِ He said, the example, just like the shepherd. The shepherd, when he take his sheep to the borders 
or uh, let's say that each king he put some uh, sanctuary things like you can't take you can't go to these private lands so if you take your sheep around or about the borders of private lands you can't guarantee that one of the sheep will pass the borders so the Prophet Sallallahu give us that example he said the one who follow or who do the doubtful things, the suspicious things it's just like that shepherd when he takes his animal his sheep to the borders he can't really guarantee one of them will cross the border the border يوشك أن يرتع فيه ألا وإن لكل ملك حما and each king has borders has some protected area and ألا وإن حما الله محاربة and the حما the protected area of Allah سبحانه وتعالى is the محارم is the things that Allah سبحانه وتعالى made prohibited it's haram you are not allowed to cross the border to it that we say حدود الله it's the borders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one can cross it and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ألا وإن في الجسد مضار there is a piece or a morsel exactly the, the, just like some small piece in the body if become good the whole body will be will become good and if it become bad or evil the whole body will become evil ala wa hiya al and this is the heart so this is the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there is a lot of things in this hadith first of all the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Inna al-halala bayin wa inna al-haram bayin And there is another relation in Bukhari Al-halala bayin wa al-haram bayin So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the narration of Bukhari He said halal is clear Haram is clear Which is like if you don't know It's good to know But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Inna al-halala bayin wa inna al-haram bayin Most surely that the halal is clear in this narration. So the scholars they said, why the Prophet sallallahu used the taqid? He said, sure, the halal is clear. They say because a lot of people they know halal and they know haram, but they try to make it doubtful with the other level, the suspicious things. For example, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talked about riba, he said it's haram. But still you find some people who said, oh, this is not haram. But it's clear. It's in the book. There is no doubt about it. Same thing with the halal. There is some halal things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. But some people they said, oh, this is maybe, and this is not Allah. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said as a halal, it's a halal. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said as a haram, it's a haram. It's to Allah. In al illa lillah. The hukm, the rule, it's only belong to Allah. No one, no prophet, no one else can decide beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said as a halal, it's the halal. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said as a haram, it's a haram. And this is two levels we all know. But there is another thing, which is al mushtabihat The things that it's between the halal and haram. And we don't really know a lot of things about them. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a lot of kinds of food as halal and he mentioned some as a haram but there is some just like we mentioned but you remember uh, about uh, last week we talked about the airborne 
or the Jarbur. We said, the Hanafi would have said, it's haram and the Shafi'i said it's halal. Because it depends on the rule, on the madahib. Because this is a doubtful thing. It's not mentioned as a halal, but it's, it, eats, it eats the plants, only the plants. So the Yarbur only eats the plant and the roots of the plant. This is the, the, the kind that exists in, in, in the, the Arabian land. But there is another kind that eats uh, some hasharat insects. So that's why it's like a little bit doubtful. So the Hanif Mithaf said it's haram. Shafi Mithaf said hala. I just want to change the but I think it skips a lot of sound. Maybe we don't even need it, right? Can you hear? Okay. The halal, we have the haram, and we have the doubtful matters or things. And we said, the halal is halal, the haram is haram, it's very clear, there is no doubt about it. But these things, the Prophet sallallahu said about them, he said, Whoever avoids the shubuhat, the doubtful things, he saves himself. He saves his religion and his honor as well. And these, the Prophet ﷺ gives the example of the shepherd. When he takes the sheep to the borders, of the protected areas, he can't really control them. So he should make a space between his sheep and the borders, just to give some protected, uh, protect himself from falling in haram. And same thing with each one of us. If you really become on the borders, you will fall in haram. There is uh, another hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu says Da' ma yuribuk ila ma la yuribuk Leave the things that you have doubt about it to the things that there is no doubt about it. Okay, that's clear. Also the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned the hadith. He said, May Allah curse the thief. He steal an egg and then they cut his hand and he steal a rope you know just a rope and they cut his hand so the scholars they said like there is no cut unless you steal something valuable why the prophet ﷺ said this and this hadith by the way authentic right to bukhari and muslim so one of the scholars he said it's not about the rope because some of the scholars they said Maybe it's really valuable, like the egg, it's valuable, maybe it's more than Islam, which is not. But some of the scholars, they said, that will lead to get his hand cut. Because he will steal the egg first, and then steal a rope, small things. Then he will get used to it, until he will steal something valuable, then they will cut his hand. So this is the meaning of the hadith of the Prophet So if you start with something small, it will lead you to something bigger and bigger. So if you start with the doubtful things, it will lead you to haram. If you think the doubtful thing is easy for you, soon you will find haram is very easy. And there is many, many examples. There is uh, some of the drinks that it's, there is no alcohol in it. But it looks like alcohol drinks. And it's very popular in, in, in the Arab world. Wallahi, if there is nothing about it, there is no doubt about it. There is a doubt, by the way, because there is alcohol in it. But it's very small. 
three percent, like whatever. You know, because because even like in, in this, even even in, in, in the, for example, the the Jews, there is some kufur in it. The grave Jews, there is some kufur in it, and it's not haram. But let's talk about something else. If there is no doubt about it, if it's clear, but the only doubt comes from the way that the young people drink it, it will be haram. Because it's it give you that you just try to copy people who drinks alcohol it looks like alcohol and soon or later you will drink alcohol because you just copy them and you said like what the difference between what i'm doing now and with alcohol it's the same and maybe it's better let's try it that's why they call it said is to cut the, the way that leads to something haram. This is one of them. And there is a lot. Like for example here, each time to time, people who doesn't follow the halal food, that they, they said everything is halal, they come and ask, and they said, oh, we ate pork. And this has never happened with someone only eats halal food. Never. But just recently, I got two people asking me about, like, what I should do, what kind of istighfar, what kind of salah if you eat pork. I said, like, you do it without really in intention to eat pork, and still it's not acceptable, but you should be, like, care about what you eat. If you just go to any restaurant and eat, for sure one time you will make a mistake. Or the, the guy will make a mistake and you don't even know. One question about that. Uh, yes? If you go to any restaurant, my assumption is that most of the chef, whoever cooking, they use the same place to bring any food. So basically, you are get into into. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm not talking about the same. Now it's like even worse. People yeah. they don't they don't really care. Yeah, that's not like a, you like you you cook the with. you cook the pork with the, yeah, with the, the chicken with the with with yeah, the meat everything. with with the ataba. Yeah. Now, it's become acceptable to eat whatever, and that will leads you soon or later to eat even pork. You know or you don't. And there is, subhanAllah, there is some people, they don't care. They said like, oh, this is halal, why you make it haram? I don't say it's haram. There is some opinions. Maybe my opinion is different. But there is some opinions, they said it's halal. I wouldn't say it's haram, you have not to eat these things. But, wallahi, man istabara alidini wa ardi. Sahih? Just like the Prophet وسلم, said, whoever saved himself from these things, he saved his religion and his honor. But you just go and eat, halal or not, you will eat pork. Many, Very soon. Many of my friends did that. I, maybe I didn't know anyone unless he, he, he tried. When, because you go to the restaurant, you can't really control. And there is a lot of names you don't even aware about. So just recently I get, subhanAllah, one guy, he asked me like, what I should do if I ate uh, pork. He said, there is nothing but just make istighfar, you don't know. But you shouldn't eat food that you don't really know what is inside. You should eat halal food. You should be aware about what you eat. Because after all, your your body, your flesh, will grow from this. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the body that grows from haram, the fire will ask for it. Because it's from haram. Then, then the Prophet ﷺ, and by the way, the Prophet ﷺ, he, he used really to to avoid these doubtful things. Do you know, Aisha, uh, عنها, 
she used to say, we know on the, the woman period, it's not allowed to have a relation, right? But you have, you actually allowed to have anything except which is the, the like, intercourse, exactly. But the Prophet Sallallahu he, he used to do something else, extra. He used to ask Aisha to wear something from the belly button to the knees. And then if he wants to do something, that's what he said. Yubashiruni bihaq tariq. In this way. Just to put some safety for them. And he doesn't need this. He just need to avoid the intercourse. That's it. But the Prophet ﷺ, he used to do this. And a lot of examples of that in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. And now, there is something very important in this hadith. That the Prophet ﷺ said, inside the human body, there is a peace. If it's good, the whole body will be good. If it's bad, the whole body will be bad or evil or diseased. Many translations to this word. And he said, this piece is the heart. We don't have Amr with us. Maybe it will be like, if we have a doctor, it will be better. But now the scholars, they said, what is the heart that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned? So we think with our hearts or with our minds. What do you think, Sheikh Hamid? I think of Musa Allah be pleased with him, his prophet. He wanted to see Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on Turisin on Mount Sinai, and. The, the, as I recall, the answer was that uh, something like his mind believes, but his or his heart believes, but his mind needs to be convinced. It was one or the other. Something yes. of this comes to mind. It's 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 actually confirmed in the ayat of the hadith that iman, that the ability to choose, that everything related to the heart. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "Ulaika al-ladina kadaba." Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set in their hearts the iman. So they, they, they know the iman in their hearts. And he make the iman good in your hearts. And again. And Don't they reflect the ayat of Quran or there is Lots locks on their hearts. So they're reflected in the heart. This hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, the heart. In the other hadith in Muslim, hadith of Ibrahim, the Prophet ﷺ, he touched the heart and said, the taqwa hahuna. Taqwa inside. And the taqwa, the ability to, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be aware. So it's all the hadith mentioned that. It's the heart. And then the scholars, they said, okay, it's the heart. But when you hit the heart, or even now, if you are able to take the heart, put it in another body, nothing of the thoughts will change. Right? But if you hit the mind, the demand, Everything will change. That's why there is some doubt of this in the scholars. The scholars, most of them, they said the ability to think, it's in the heart. Some of them, they said, like Abu Hanif, and it's a one uh, narration with the Imam Ahmed that he said it's the aql, it's the mind. But still, my idea, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows better is this body is a tool for the soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us and 
Subhanallah, if there is no soul in the body, even if there is no damage, like someone just passed away and there is no damage in, in, in the whole things, still everything works, but there is no soul, he can't move, <coughs> right? So, the mind, the heart, it's just a tool. The mind is to save the memories, it's just like your small computer that you put all things in it. And the heart, it's the blood pumps. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu mentioned the heart, it means the heart of the soul, which is the center of the soul. Do you know how you, how you say, like, hit the heart? Like you hit the center of the thing. It doesn't mean like search for the, the real heart, right? It's just, it's, it's just like the, the things that it really matter. It's the center of the thing. Hit the heart of it. So the heart of the soul, what they are mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we don't really know a lot about the soul. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْرُوحِ قُلْ يَرْوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And when they ask you about the ruh, about the soul, say, it's the matter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever you get from the knowledge, it's a little. That's mean you don't know about the soul. So we don't really know about the soul. There is a heart in the soul, there is something, but what the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned and what the ayat mentioned is the ability of thinking and choose the right and see the wrong and try to avoid it. It's all in the heart of the soul. And there are some scholars, they said, the shape of the soul is just like the shape of the body just like the shape of the body. And the heart of the soul, it's where you think. <coughs> and I think this is the right about to put all the, the science and, and the, 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 the religion, what the religion said about it. Because even the mind, if you, if you, if you are able to take the mind and put it in someone else, I don't think it will, will change a lot in, in, in your thinking if it's possible because it's just the tool that how you like process things just like it just give the or the orders to to the other things and maybe more memory to like save some memories in it so <coughs> that's what what i think and there is some scholars they think the same like what what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant and the prophet وسلم, it's the heart of the soul, which is the center of the soul, the ability to think. It's not the, the real heart that it just like a bump take the, the blood to the other organs. So, the Prophet ﷺ said, this, the heart of the soul, if it's good, the whole body will act according to this. because. It's the king of the other organs. Like your, your hand will not act without your orders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the ability and the authority to control your hands. But in the hereafter, it will be a witness against you. So you have to be careful. Whatever you feed and try to take care of, it will be a witness against you in that day of judgment. So, any questions? Any other questions? No? Jazakumullah khair, barakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.